Welcome to Between Two Wheels Podcast, where we talk about all things on and between two wheels. I'm your host, Johnny Too Scared to Buy a Dirt Bike Roadblock, and you all know my co-host, co-hosts, Justin, 30,000 subs, baby bird, and uncle, talk to me about flat earth, Ken. <laughs> This episode is being brought to you by Get Lowered Cycles, your one-stop shop for all things Harley and Harley-related. Nutsack, the last EDC bag you'll ever want or need, and Brush Hero, the ultimate detail brush. Today, weirdly, this episode's the one you have been asking for, the ADV Bike Shootout. What's up, guys? What's up? Don't call me a fucking baby bird. Hey. <laughs> are, you, are you a big bird? A bitchin' bird. A bitchin' bird. So, we actually have a special guest on this episode. <laughs> Uh, the orn- honorary, oh, God, God damn it, it. the honorary one has uh, has decided to join us for this episode. As a completely, uh, what do you say? You you know literally nothing about ADV bikes. Am I yeah, correct in saying um, that? So what I'm fixing to say is not relevant at all. <laughs> oh, it's totally relevant. <laughs> so no, that's what we want. That's, yeah, it's all bullshit. I've I've never seen these bikes in person. If I have, I didn't know what I was looking at. Um, <laughs> y'all have a bunch of specs up too, and that's impressive because uh, mostly I can't read, so <laughs> I know numbers. Oh, so you like oh, p- you pictures and numbers? Yeah, oh, okay. we got you, man. We yeah, got we pictures got and numbers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so. For the ADV bike shootout, we're looking at this from six objective categories, so actual specs, and one subjective category. So we're looking at engine size in cc's, tank size in gallons, the weight of the motorcycle's wet, so everything, you know, all the fluids and everything Out in there. The rain. Uh, what type of drivetrain they use, the power, so horsepower and torque where available, cost. And then that subjective one is which one looks the coolest? Okay. Sounds like how I pick out my hookers. Yeah. <laughs> Works. Which one has the biggest tanks? <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> All right. So let's jump into it. Our first bike we're going to be talking about is the Yamaha Super Tenere. Am I saying that right? As far as I know, yes. Okay. Uh, it's the name of a desert. Okay. Yeah. The engine size on this one is an 1199 liquid cooled inline two cylinder. Tank is 6.1 gallons for our non Americans. That's 23 liters. I didn't put decimal points on the liters. I'm sorry. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, the weight is 584 pounds. Uh, again, for non Americans, 261 kilos. It is shaft driven. Horse- hey, <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Uh, horsepower is 108. And torque is 84 foot pounds. Cost coming in just shy of $16,200. And I tried to get everything um, around the same price as much as I could. So some of these are going to be the bottom of the line of that model. Some of them are going to be the top of the line. This one was kind of in the upper, upper to high, mid to high. I mean, um, it wasn't their top of the line one, but it was the the closest within that that price range okay i All tried right. to make it as close to apples to, as to apples dollar wise as possible okay i saw that yeah yeah so so i have a question that, that just struck me mm-hmm. when we're talking about engine size and they talk about cc's why are they always like 11.99 or you know 599 it's a tax thing yeah if it's over 400 or say for example like the 400s come with 399 cc's if they have 400 or above they fall into a different um so fun fact it's actually a harley tax well harley and indian tax in a in order to keep the japanese market out of america or make it less popular in the 80s harley went to congress and had an import tax put on specific uh, CC motorcycles. So anything over 883, go figure, hmm. had, you know, anything had to have a higher import tax because the Hondas are coming in with 900 CC motorcycles, 850s, things like that. So they wanted to have more tax to make them more expensive so that Americans wouldn't want to go buy them. Of course, didn't work, but that's, that's one of the reasons for it. So th- different tiered tax systems on the import yeah. tax so they'll have they'll call it a you know super tenere 1200 but it's 1199 cc on the spec sheet yeah ah. 
So what you're saying is it it it's not a heart. Well, it kind of is a Harley tax today, but it stemmed from yeah. Okay, yeah. Gotcha. America. <laughs> so uh, I did also throw in uh, a couple other just like interesting facts. I was able to find some. You were able to find a lot. Some not so much. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just wanted to give um, more you know, ammunition to see at the end if we discuss, you know, what bike is best for the dollar or mm-hmm. things like that. Cause th- I would say across, you know, engine tank weight, the objective things that we're talking about, everything is pretty close, mm-hmm. but the additional facts are really where you start to see the difference. And it's, it's funny cause a lot of them, you see a lot of very, uh, performance and convenience based options. And another side, you see like a lot of technological options. Like that's what they really focused on. So I thought it was interesting to see, you know, the, the other additional features outside the spec sheet. Uh, for example, the Yamaha has ABS traction control cruise and uh, UBS, which is unified braking system. Uh, basically what us Harley riders call the linked brakes, um, all come standard it has two riding modes, uh, basically rain and Dry. give it all you got. <laughs> uh, toolless adjustable seat height. You only get one inch though. I, I thought that was kind of weird. And your uh, windscreen is also adjustable without tools, uh, 2.3 inches. And uh, one notable, noticeable thing I found on this bike that not a lot of them had was the side and a center stand are included from the factory. So hmm. it had a normal kickstand and then a center stand. Correct. Now it's I, got both. I hate center stands. Uh, they they, they might, come in handy when you're doing work yeah. and with an ADV bike. Yeah, there's probably a lot of stuff. If you're out somewhere... Yeah. You know, you prop yeah. it up on that center stand, and you can yeah, can like actually accomplish some work. I see. I would think it'd make a lot more sense on these types of bikes, um, but yeah, absolutely like on a Harley. No, I don't I, get on a Harley. I, no, you uh, only see center stands on Harleys if they're bagged. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so I mean, we don't really have anything to. I I can compare it because I already know what all the the ones coming up. But you know, just to run through the specs. You know, 1,200 cc, 6.1 gallons, 800 or 584 pounds, shaft driven, 108 horsepower, 84 foot pounds, about 16.2. That's what we got with the Yamaha. Yeah. And uh, spoked wheels. I did want to point that out too, because that's another area where one company went one way, another one went the other. But so I watch a lot of Fort Nine, and he did a video talking about why on an ADV bike you want spoked yeah. and not mag wheels. And I thought it was a really good video. If I can find it, I'll, I'll add it to the show notes here. But from your experience, you rode dirt bikes. Yes. All your spoke or all your rims were spoked, correct? Correct. All right. Yeah. Basically what it comes down to, I don't know if I haven't seen the video you're referring to, but you can change a tube within a spoke tire a lot easier than changing an entire tire on a mag wheel. Yeah. Because you don't have to, you know, get the... The, the fire explosion you don't have to get it to the bead to set it's just you fill up the the fucking tube and it goes yeah you can change it with literally th- i mean once the wheel is off three tools yeah and you're mm-hmm. done yeah makes right. it a lot easier so our next bike on the list is the triumph tiger 1200 xr engine is a 1215 cc liquid cooled inline three cylinder uh f- tank is a 5.2 gallon or 19 liters weight 534 pounds 242 kilograms it is shaft driven horsepower 141 torque 90 cost 16.5 so one thing i also want to point out in the triumph is with it being a inline three cylinder that 90 foot pounds is going to be linear you're going to get that pretty much that same torque wherever you are nice now with these these are higher revving engines right like 10,000 11,000 or for sure yeah. yeah okay yeah this is the same. Well, it used to be. I don't know about this model specifically, but this used to be the same motor that was in the Triumph Speed Triple. Hmm, cool. Wow. So go through A some of, of the uh, the add-ons <laughs> that you get with this one. Uh, so this one has three rider modes. From If I'm remembering from uh, memory correctly, uh, it had the rain mode, standard, and then an off-road uh, okay. mode. It changes how the torque's um, given, things like that. Kind of change your gear ratio? Not so much gear ratio, but uh, how much the everything is letting slip basically it gives you a little bit more control over the bike as opposed to the nannies taking over and you know kicking in the traction control and things like uh, that okay yeah that makes sense um, it is an adjustable seat height it is not toolless but you get 0.79 inches of adjustability really you know 
really specific there. Um, it does have switchable ABS and trash control, so you can turn them on and off with the flip of a switch. And it does have cruise control standard. Also comes with a center stand. Hmm. All right. And it does have mag wheels. It does not have spoked wheels. Now, that switchable ABS trash control, that would be really good for off-road. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, you actually may want to slide your yes. rear end if you're stuck in the yeah. mud or something like and that. And one of these, I, I'm I'm sorry, I can't remember which one, but on one of them, it allows you to switch the ABS off only on the rear. Oh, wow. So if you just want your okay. back end to slide, but you don't want your front to slide out, you can set that. Hmm. All right. So let's... Uh, Let's jump into our first ad break here from Nutsack and come back with, uh, what is the next bike? I think the KTM. Nutsack is the only EDC bag the crew carries, and for good reason. They're crazy and awesome. They get their name because folks said they had to be nuts to manufacture a man bag in America with American waxed canvas, American leather, and American labor. We want you to join us in the two-week challenge. Buy a bag from them, use it for two weeks, and if it doesn't completely change the way you carry your everyday gear, they will give you a full refund. We absolutely love ours from carrying a Around extra mags for our concealed carry to earbuds sunglasses vape stuff and business cards it is great having less shit in our pockets and it was because of the nutsack satchels that we were able to be less weighed down if you buy using our link nutsack will give you five dollars off to enjoy a beer head over to nutsack.com slash b2w that's n-u-t-s-a-c dot com slash b the number two w to get yours today and we are back now justin lead us off with the ktm so the ktm that we picked for this category uh is slightly higher in price than the previous two we just talked about but like i said it was probably the closest i could get as far as dollar for dollar uh, it's the ktm 1290 super adventure r it is a 1301 cc liquid cooled v-twin uh, 6.1 gallons or 23 liters, 529 pounds or 239 kilograms. It is our first chain-driven bike, and the uh, horsepower and torque numbers are pretty freaking impressive. 158 horsepower and 130 foot-pounds of torque, but you do pay for it a little bit, uh, $18,499. But one of those things that uh, you kind of have to take into to uh, you know kind of offset that cost 15,000 kilometers or nine about 9,300 miles in between services. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's, inc- long that's including from your very first. So you take the bike off the lot, you can go 9,300 miles before that ever has to see a dealer again. And from my experience with off-road, if KTM says that, that is what that bike is going to do. Well, KTM is a premium off-road brand. They anyways. are pr- yeah. premium. Yeah, they kicked our asses back when I raced. <laughs> like, it was always a KTM winning. Um, it does have adjustable controls, both foot and hand controls. So you can adjust where your lever- levers are. You can adjust where your, your pegs are. Uh, it does have uh, off-road ABS. So I think this is the one where I was talking about. It, it only lets the rear slide, not the front. Oh, okay. uh, it has t- uh, TPMS or tire pressure monitoring system. Off-road trash control. Cruise hmm. control, a keyless entry, or a key fob for Harley riders, and it comes with auto cancel turn signals. Hell yeah! All that comes standard. All for eighteen five. Eighteen five, yeah. So like I said, a little bit pricier, but uh, you do get the premium uh, so, uh, brakes, and you do get spoke wheels as well. So with the auto cancel turn signals. With them calling that out, is that something that's not normal on the other ADV bikes? Not that I know of. I know especially the other bikes that these companies make are not auto cancel. Wow. Yeah. So I guess we're spoiled riding. We are very spoiled. Absolutely spoiled. Yep. That was one of the hardest things when I was riding the Speed Triple was remembering. Like I just made it a habit of like every 45 seconds I would just reach up and cancel. Push that button. Reach up and cancel. (laughs) Are you making that many turns? I mean, anytime I turn, yeah. yeah. It just. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's jump over to Ken, and let's hear about Honda. Yeah, the Honda Africa Twin CRF 1000 L2. This is one of their closer to the top of the line. I want to. Oh, actually, I want to say this one is the mm-hmm. top of the line. I had it in my notes, but then Roadblock fucked with my notes and yes, I ruined Dude, a bunch of shit. Messing things up. So the inch size is 998 cc liquid cooled parallel twin. The tank is 6.4 gallons, 24 liters. Weight comes in at 
532 pounds, 241 kilograms. It's another chain drive. Horsepower is 94, torque is 73, and we're coming in at 1599. Well, 15,099. 15 yeah. Yeah, 15 So, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's the cheapest one so far. It is. I think it's the cheapest out of all of them. But it's also, and it's the, also the lowest smallest. powered. Yeah, it uh, is also the, the smallest uh, engine, I believe. So it's <laughs> something about this, though. It has the smallest engine, but it's got the highest seat height, doesn't it? It's got a ball-crushing seat height. Yeah, it's like 34-inch seat height. I think it's yeah. 36. I think it's, I think it's higher than that. Yeah. I, I know I, I could feel a stretch when we were at IMS I mean, and I sat on this thing. Like, I love this. Bike. I got flat foot it, but it's it's in you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. It's in you. It's intimate with you. But one thing I noticed is it does look like Honda is really trying to squeeze as many features into this bike as possible and keeping the price as low as they can. Uh, it comes with seven riding modes, which I believe was the highest. That's a lot. Um, it's a lot. Yeah, it's a uh, lot, a lot. I wouldn't be able to keep track of what all of those were. Apparently, it's very easy. I watched a very brief glimpse of like a first ride where the guy was actually taking it off road, and he said that the riding modes you did feel the changes. Mm -hmm. It's basically the same, you know, wet, dry, off road. There's just more steps in between it. Hmm. So uh, it does come with switchable ABS, uh, and then it comes with crash bars and heated grips, standard. Hmm. which that's something I noticed on these bikes is a lot of them don't include any sort of crash protection nor storage. Right. Right. Yeah. A lot of them have the mounting options already built in, but I don't think, I think only one of these came with storage. Right. Well, I think they're aiming it for the street rider, you know, who wants that option. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I price it out and everyone outside of BMW is all kind of in that same price range to get a full setup you're looking at about a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars for yeah. a full storage setup i'm talking dual saddlebags and their equivalent of a tour pack okay all right so the next bike is the kawasaki yeah this is the only one that came with the storage standard okay yeah so this is the versus 1000 se lt yeah. which is was their top of the line Jesus, got a long enough damn name. Yeah, they basically <laughs> just kept adding on to the end of the name for each model. Mm -hmm. yeah. It keeps it easy to keep track of, right? All right, so this one has a 1,043cc liquid-cooled four-cylinder, 5.5-gallon or 20-liter gas tank. Weight is 566 pounds or 256 kilos. Drivetrain, again, is chain. Now, unable to find horsepower numbers for this bike, but the torque is right around 75 foot-pounds. And it comes in at 18,000. Yeah. So this was the one I was referring to when I said that this was very, very technologically focused. Mm -hmm. They were, everything on their website was focused around their technology. Um, you have electronically controlled adjustable suspension. That's both front and rear. So you can adjust your preload at the press of a button. Hmm. It is also active. So when you're going through a turn, kind of how you like, you know, the, the supercars do, they can add pressure, take pressure out of certain shocks. Mm -hmm. it, it does that. Oh, wow. It's pretty impressive. Uh, the cornering management function, that is basically what I just talked about. It does have switchable trash control and ABS. It comes standard with a quick shifter. So you can shift up and down without using the clutch. It's, okay. pretty, it's pretty awesome. Uh, it does come with cruise control, only has four riding modes. Uh, it does have cornering headlamps. So if you lean left, if you scroll up here and you look at the picture, those little side uh, oh, yeah. lights right above the forks, those will light up and actually shine through the turn. Did we we talked we saw we talked about this at uh, IMS? Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. So as you're leaning, not, that's going to come on. Yeah, because they're not on all the time. Correct. They're only on when you're turning. Yeah. Yeah. And then, like I said, it uh, comes with 28 liters, uh, 28 liter saddle bags included. What does that compare to, like, the Harley touring bikes? Do you remember what the saddlebag sizes are? I want to say it's pretty damn close. Yeah. So yeah. 28 liters, huh? that's what, like, 7 gallons? I don't know what Freedom Units that is. <laughs> freedom <laughs> Units, Jesus Christ, here we go. <laughs> All right, and I think this is the... This is our last one, The yeah. last bike, and I think also has the most options that you can do to them from the factory, right? For price, yes. <laughs> for, always for a price. Yeah. Um, BMW R1250 GS has a 
cubic centimeter air and liquid cooled flat boxer twin. The only company that's doing that in a bike that I know of. Yeah. Sounds fancy. It's basically how Porsche motors are built, just a two-cylinder. Yeah. 6.3 gallon, 24 liter gas tank, weight 549 pounds, 249 kilos. It is shaft driven, 136 horsepower, 105 foot pounds of torque, and it comes in just shy of $17,700. Also, one thing I want to point out is that within the BMW GS line, they have the most options out of every other company. So, like, I know Yamaha makes a uh, 700 Super Mm -hmm. Tenere. Um, I don't think Triumph sells a smaller one. But BMW now has one all the way down to 400, I believe. It's like 350 or 400. Wow. Really? Yeah. So, and it's it comes in, I want to say it comes in sub 10. I could be wrong on that. But they have options for everybody within this ADV category. Sweet. Uh, it does come with switchable ABS. Uh, it do- only has two riding modes, which is rain and road. Uh, adjustable windshield, adjustable seat does not show how much they're adjustable. Uh, trash control comes standard. Hill start control comes standard, which this was the only bike that had that. It comes with LED lighting, but it does not come with cruise control standard. Help me understand hill start because I my truck has. I still don't understand how or what it's for. You don't roll backwards. So you take your foot off the brake. Right. It holds you there so you can press the gas. And yeah. Go. Okay. It's basically something within the, uh, well, it's probably just the brakes on this one, but on my Camaro, it, it engages the parking brake mm-hmm. until it feels pressure on it and then it releases it. Oh, wow. So I don't have to, like, you know, jump pedals to avoid, you know, hitting the car behind me. But for uh, – ADV bikes, that's a, that's used a lot when you're off-roading. So like sure. if you get stuck up halfway up a hill, you don't have to sit there and you can keep both feet planted on the ground, not have to worry about your brake and just let out the clutch and it's not going to roll back. Okay, cool. So, cool. But the way BMW does it is they have like packages that you in, can include. So Damn. this was uh, one of the, this was the package that would pretty much bring it up to uh, say, for example, the KTM or the Versailles kind of around that same area so dynamic trash control which is uh, basically just adds another rider mode from Mm -hmm. what i can understand has the keyless entry so it's the uh, key fob the quick shift um, brings in ride modes pro which is six modes instead of two the gps preparation so all this does is add a bracket in front of the rider to where if you buy bmw's uh, gps unit it clips in and will then read through the bike yeah, it becomes a. It also becomes a second screen. Correct. Yeah, it, um, it, it's the bracket as well as the wiring harness. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Um, chrome exhaust, heated grips, tire pressure monitoring system, cruise control, hand guards, which I want to point out was standard on every other bike we've talked about, as well as the saddle bag mounts, all for just over three thousand dollars, bringing this one up to about twenty thousand eight hundred. So our most expensive. Wow. If you add that package up. Right. And uh, that's, that's essentially what we were looking at at IMS. Correct. Yeah. That one. yeah. Correct. Yes. Um, now, I know on the uh, tour, the normal road touring models, you couldn't get a base model K1600. Every one of the dealerships always yeah. had the platinum or premium or whatever the fuck mm-hmm. um, yeah. package already built into it. So I wonder how the dealerships like the bmw dealerships do it with these if they're getting in with everything on there yeah and you you just haggle with them or if you're able to actually get them base model and then go from there no idea i've never stepped foot inside a bmw dealership (laughs) (laughs) all right so after this break we're going to come back and go through who were the winners and who were the losers over our categories and then start talking about the looks and get into that debate but first let's hear from brush hero if you prefer washing your own bike and car brush hero is the ultimate diy detailing tool for you 100 percent water powered all you have to do is hook it up to your garden hose and go to town on your dirty ride with the various interchangeable brush heads you will be able to take care of those hard to reach spots around the engine your rims, and anywhere else road gribe can get stuck to. So if you are a DIY detailer, pick up a Brush Hero today. And if you use the coupon code WHEELS, you will get 10% off your order. And we are back. So, Justin, since you're going to 
hate us for these answers. Let's go ahead and have you go through the winners and the losers based on the specs, and okay. then we'll go into the looks. Based on specs alone, engine size, just engine size, CC-wise, we have KTM in the lead with 1301, Honda in last place with 998. Mm -hmm. Tank-wise, uh, Triumph takes the L at 5.2 gallons, Honda takes the win at 6.4 gallons. Uh, coming in the weight category, uh, Yamaha loses, is the most heavy, at 584 pounds. KTM takes another win at 529 pounds. I didn't, um, I didn't include a winner or loser within the drivetrain because I feel like that's a personal preference type of thing. Yeah. yeah. I personally, I've only ridden one shaft driven bike and it was a Moto Guzzi, so <laughs> I'm not going to you know, count those <laughs> off. It's definitely more reliable, less maintenance in the chain, but I don't know. Aren't the Goldwing shaft driven? <laughs> yes. That's what I thought. I did not know that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, now, now I know. All right, horsepower. Uh, I only included a winner in the horsepower category. Uh, that was KTM with quite a large margin at 158. And Honda comes in last place with 94 horsepower, which can we just say that's still a fucking that's lot of power lot. for a 532-pound bike? Yeah. Okay, so uh, even though KTM took three wins, it did take the loss in the in the cost category, not taking into account the BMW with the package, of course, uh, sure. at eighteen four ninety nine, and the Honda takes its second win at fifteen or fifteen one. Yeah, and these of course are all in U.S. dollars. Yep. All right, so let's get into the completely subjective category here of <laughs> which one we thought looks cool and so we rated we ranked every one of these bikes uh simply based off of the pictures that were in yep. our show notes so you'll be able to see exactly what we saw uh when we rated these well to, to be fair to, to be fair, fair i did look at a lot more pictures while i was well so did i that. but okay well. <laughs> well, i know I was ken, was the, your ken was on the road shit numbers but whatever. so all right so I rated the Yamaha Super Tenere at a seven. I thought it had pretty cool looks. I, I like kind of the lines that are on it. Uh, and I like the color option. So yeah. for me, that, that helped it with the ranking. Uh, Ken, what did you get this the Super Tenere at? So I gave it a six. It's kind of just it's above average mm -hmm. as far as the rest of them go. I feel like it was kind of like a Eric Buell bike. Like, I feel like they were that fucking close <laughs> to making it awesome. Yeah. So close. Yeah. yeah. I, I just, it's just, I don't know, it's just kind of middle of the road, just kind of, it's clearly an ADV bike, just the way it stands, obviously what they, how they have it built. But just, yeah. 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 Cool. Justin? You want to scroll up so uh, he can, uh, the honorary one can take a look at it while um, I'm giving I, my. I pulled it up on my phone. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. Never mind then. Uh, I give it a 7.5. I'm pretty much right there with Ken. I just gave it a little bit better score just because it looks well put together. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's a good designed bike, but like I said, I feel like Eric Buell designed this. I feel like it's just that close to being a really good looking bike, but based off of the other scores I gave, I gave this one a 7.5. Okay. Uh, the Triumph Tiger. I gave this one an 8. Uh, now... I, I've seen a lot of these. This like we've had this discussion before. This is one of my favorite yeah. ADV bikes, and I have to say I have not ridden any of these bikes. Cool. I have Same. never oh, yeah. ridden an ADV bike. I've sat on most of them. Yeah, but from the looks and everything, I I really like the Tiger. So I, I gave this one an eight. Justin, I gave it a six point five. I really like this bike. But I think that looks are the lowest on my list. Okay. So, well, TJ, well, how about you? We didn't even ask you about the Super Tenere. What do you think about the looks of the Super Tenere? I don't like it at all. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just, so this is the one we're talking about right now. Yeah, but that's the Super Tenere. Trust me, I don't know shit here, but I don't like the look of that bike at all. No. Well, you know, most people buy with their eyes. They don't care That's about true. spec sheets and all that stuff. Hey, this bike looks cool. I want to get this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you, you're you actually kind of the perfect person to give your an opinion because it's it's just like, well, let's face it, as guys, 
as heterosexual guys, when we're looking at women, we're looking at women. Yeah. We're looking at them. Yeah. yeah. Right. And we're deciding, well, okay. Right. Okay, so this has a lot of breast and no ass. So I was looking at <laughs> there it. There it is. Yeah. Perfect. I mean, that's perfect. accurate. Way. Yeah. And, and kind of fucked up eyes, right? Yeah. It's the heavy. headlights throw me off. Yeah, it's heavy in the front, loud in the rear. Yeah. I, just my opinion. Okay. Um, yeah. Mm, I'm sure it handles great. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Don't they all? <laughs> <laughs> I do like tits. So, <laughs> all right. So let's go. What, what's the next one we're talking about? Uh, the Triumph Tiger is the next one. So that's right, right there. Right there. Okay. Uh, that front fairing, I'm not digging it at all. Yeah. Looks the like front a, is where it throws me off as well. Yeah. It looks like a chicken beak. Yeah. Um, it's a little sharp. It, it looks like they tried to go for like that dirt bike look, but then they threw a fender, yeah. an actual fender over the tire. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then it's like open that front I'm just not digging it and then the exhaust and the, the frame the center of it I'm struggling with that too <laughs> I'll say though like I don't like the way it looks but if I was just like if I had none of this stat sheet and I had no earthly knowledge I would think that this bike would handle the best out of all of them based off of the looks because it has that, that dirt bike it's, look to it it's mm -hmm. a good looking bike yeah, and that's why I gave it an 8 now, I wonder if it's got the double fender thing going on because a lot of people take off that the, the factory over the, over the tire fender, but to keep it in its class, they have to have that fender from the factory. I oh, wonder I'm, if that's I'm, something. I'm sure that's probably a, a dot thing. No idea. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we have all of our thoughts on that one. Let's move over to the KTM 1290 Super Adventure. R, not adventurer. <laughs> uh, what do you think, uh, TJ? Yeah, I don't like it either. <laughs> <laughs> Show him some pictures of the front of the bike, though, because yeah. that side profile really doesn't do it it's justice. It's really thick, isn't it? It's actually really skinny. Oh, from, from the front, front? it's okay. super skinny. Yeah, and the the headlight is the headlight is something that we haven't seen before. When you see it in person, it really well, catches see, your eye. That's just it, man. We're looking at this shit like on a screen here. You get up and touch it and feel it and sit on it. It's just, you got to try shit out. And yeah. it's so unfair for me to sit here and judge this when I haven't felt it. Yeah. <laughs> but but yeah, that's like, look at that front end. Yeah, I definitely don't like the front end either. No. <laughs> it's it's, it's no, super <laughs> futuristic. It, yeah. Right, I was going to say alien. Yeah, it's alien-esque. Yeah, but the frame is cool. Like I always like seeing that frame outside of that. Um, yeah, I don't like that bike, but I'm sure it's badass to ride. Yeah, with it being a KTM, I would. Yeah, a it, chain driven 158 horsepower Jesus. bike at 529 pounds. Jesus, holy shit! That's a beast. <laughs> is this I'm, the one that um, Royal Jordanian he has? I don't. It's I don't in the him. same family. I don't know if he has this exact. Okay. Point. But, yeah, it's in the same family. You know, and who is that asshole up in Canada? Uh, <laughs> that is a Snowcat. Snowcat. That's, he has the Super Duke. That's, yeah. that's not exactly the same. Yeah, but, you know, here I am. I r ride a Road Glide, and a lot of people don't like those. Um, that's true. Yeah. And, you know, I think at first I didn't like them either. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when I first seen it until I rode it, and then you slowly. Now I just I love the look of it. I, yeah. I've never ridden a Road Glide. I bought it because it was cool. Yeah. 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 I liked it because it was different. Yep. All right. So TJ hates this bike. What mm -hmm. about you, Ken? So I really like the KTM. <laughs> I like the way it looks. Uh -huh. uh, and, and I know KTM is a brand, so that's why I rated it a nine. Yeah. Okay. I mean, not, but based on looks, I think I've, I've, I like most of the KTM bikes. Mm -hmm. I like same. their styling. Now, granted, they have the same styling on all of them, the same kind of paint on all of them. Yeah. It's a brand, though, for sure. Like, you see a bike, and you're like, that's a fucking KTM. Yeah, you know. Yeah. You know that one way or another, KTM made that bike. Yep. Uh, but, yeah, that's why I get, it looks just, I just love the way it looks. Mm -hmm. Justin? Uh, I gave this one an 8.5. I, th I want to say this is my winner. Actually, okay. This is my favorite looking bike. So, I rated it at an 8. Um, I love the the non-black frame i love yep. the color well, frame. i yeah. like orange that's one of my favorite colors i like orange as well and Ugh. ktm does not uh, disappoint when it comes to that but it it's actually a very simplistic design yeah and that's something else i really like especially on a bike that its purpose is to get thrown around 
and you know that's going to spend a lot of time on its side and you're having to pick it up and everything like that yeah well, so that, in that cage around the engine yeah you know it gives you that sense of security yeah, yeah. it then, may be a false sense of security but and it comes in at 529 on the weight correct yeah so it is the lightest yeah because yeah. it doesn't have all the extra shit on there yeah i mean yeah. But it's, <laughs> it's right. got a bigger motor mm-hmm. <laughs> which that also goes into this too it's got the biggest motor uh i think the second largest gas tank or it's, it's over a six gallon tank yeah um and it's the most powerful yeah that the, might be a badass to rod it yeah yeah. And and KTM and and can you buy this bike in the states? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, moving over to the Africa Twin. Now I see these numbers on my screen here, so I, I have a feeling we're going to have um, Justin blow a, uh, a fuse. But I'll go ahead and say I rate this one as a five. I do too. And wow. so it's the most basic. It looks. <sighs> It looks like it was 100% purpose built, and there's there's no other. They didn't throw any style into it. In my it opinion. looks like it came straight out of the fucking Dakar rally. Like it looks like it's ready to go fuck some shit up. It's basic, J- just based on looks. Just yeah. based on it looks basic. Yeah, I like basic bitches. I dig <laughs> it. I really I I dig this bike. I really like this one. Yeah. Actually, I'm changing my answer. I'm I'm going to make it a nine. This is my favorite. I like it more than the KTM. Yeah. Now that I'm seeing it in red, that's oh, my favorite. See, I went with what we had on the screen. Yeah. He, of course, he picks the fucking plainest fucking black bike, gold rims. Fucking gold rims, and I hate gold rims. I do too. Oh, I fucking right. hate gold rims. I do yeah. too. But uh, all right, so this is the first one TJ's liked. Yeah. Because he has good taste. Solid. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Basic bitches. Oh, all right. Uh, the Versys. Versus? Versys? Versailles? That's no, not Versailles. I have no fucking no. clue. Yeah. The Kawasaki. Versys. Um, I gave this one a seven. Fuck you, dude. Um, and uh, I'll tell you, and again, based off of the um, the images, I really like the, the way it looks. I, I think it has good styling. I, I do like the saddlebags on there. Um, I like the seat and kind of the design of that seat. I think it gives you good support where you need it. I do like the seat. I'll give the seat some points. Um, but I don't I, like the wheels. I don't like the wheels. I don't like the front fairing. I'm not a fan of mag wheels on this type of bike. No. But um, it doesn't have yeah. as much exposed frame. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree. I, but I really like that, that rear subframe. I think that's kind of cool how it's it's exposed. It kind of just like, hey, look at me. Um, But, yeah, overall, I really like the bike. And I think the way, and again, the pictures and the, you know, viewers, listeners, they can go to the show notes for this episode and check it out. But I just really like that. And I do dig the side lights. I think that's kind of cool. Hell yes. I Um, I do like how they integrated the lights into the design. Yes. I'll give them that. Yep. And now our... All these bikes fix fairing like this one? Most of them, if think, not all of them are. I think they all are. I'm pretty okay. sure they okay. all are. So yeah, that's that's why I rate it the way I did. Um I I just I think aesthetically it's pleasing to my eyes. Mm. <laughs> I gave it a four because I fucking hate this bike. It looks like they just took a a street bike and modified it to go off road. <laughs> so so yeah, so I, I gave it a six. It doesn't look like an ADV bike. Correct. It looks like a sport touring bike with some shit slapped on it. It looks like a commuter bike. Yeah. yeah. And that, I, it doesn't feel like looking at it, it doesn't feel like it's a bike that you would take off road and, you know, yeah. go do your thing. And as opposed to the Honda Africa twin, it's like, we're going to go fucking do Dakar like tomorrow. Yeah. Like. Cause, <laughs> cause I look at it and I think, yeah, those, those, those lights are awesome. The, the yeah. side lights, but you go down and that whole fairing is fucked. That's true. Yeah. Yep, I, I agree with you 100%. With all the the plastic that's on there, yeah. it's going to cost you pretty good money to replace all that shit yeah. when I you go down. I still dig the thought of when you turn, a light comes on. Oh, yeah. That is just, I want to. So is this the one, which one um, adjusted the suspension? It's the same one. Same this one. Is it. Yep. So 
this thing's got some. It's cool this is the one that was a hundred percent technology focused. Like well, if you go to their website, that's all they're shoving in your face. Is look at all this technology. Everything is branded too. I didn't put this in the in the notes, but everything like the the braking system, it's Kawasaki cornering management system. Like, oh, okay. They branded the shit out of it. Well. I'm, I mean, I if you're putting that kind of R&D into it, it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like if they'd have made it just a little bit more adventure. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It would have been a really good bike. I don't like the mag wheels. I, I think spoked wheels, you know, even though I was never a dirt bike rider or anything like that, I, I've I've heard and learned too much about spoked wheels and off-road use that they're just better. Yeah. 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 Agreed. All right, so let's move into the last bike on our list, the BMW R1250 GS. Yes. So, Ken, so you're already shaking your oh, head, it's, so it's, go yeah. for it. It's, 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 it's the winner for me. Okay. Man, it's a solid 10. I like the styling of it. It has a a present look, uh, not necessarily futuristic, but it, it fits the times a lot more exposed frame on the this exposed one. frame but it's covered yeah you know your engine's protected it looks off-road ready mm -hmm. it does have a little bit too sharp of a nose for the, me that beak yeah and yeah, beak looks kind of weird i still gave it a nine though just because everything else looks so good yeah. yeah now if you notice the paint job that i chose for this one mm-hmm there's a reason that thing just looks sexy as fuck. Yeah. So just so everyone they have knows, good colorways. Yeah. Yeah. Just so yeah. everyone knows, I, I rate this one as a nine as my top bike. I this was my favorite just from a looks perspective. But I have sat on this bike when we we're at IMS. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know when we went and test rode the Indians on the um, the FTR, I had the the kind of that weird pain in my hip. Because yeah. again, I'm not used to having the uh, the rear sets. But when we when I sat on this one, everything about it, it was just like it was very comfortable. Ergonomic. The for ergonomics me. are fucking perfect on yeah. this bike. Yeah, you can tell they did a lot of of work. Yeah. So I would feel comfortable my first foray out into the wilderness on this bike, just because I've sitting on it. I felt like I could have controlled it. Yeah. I mean, the only real downside to this one is if you want that upgrade, you're you're fully paying for it. Yeah. You yeah. know, another three grand. What's crazy, though, is you pay that extra three grand and make it, you know, pretty much top of the it's, line. And it's a completely different bike, though. Mm -hmm. You're you know? still six grand under a Harley. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, to that point, the yeah. K1600 Bagger is yeah. six grand less than the the any of the specials yeah yeah and it outperforms in every single category yep yeah i mean so you know look at looking at the the bmw here you know you you go from what's basic at 17 695 you you add that package to it you know and you you go from two riding modes to six yeah you're getting a lot for your money you definitely yeah. are you know yeah. you get the dynamic traction control the, you know your key fob but the riding modes Cruise control. Cruise. I mean, cruise control alone. Cruise control. I mean, that right there, great. Now, did that package come with the saddlebag mounts? Or the yes. pannier yes. mounts? So yes. w without it, without that, you don't get your saddle, your pannier mount, saddlebag right. mounts. And like I mentioned earlier, BMW's accessories, they're fucking up there. Oh, yeah. they're premium. Yeah. They're, well, like their GPS unit was, what, $1,000? Yeah. yeah. Like, even their bag mounts were pretty... You're looking pretty much Harley pricing. Yeah, for, but that... But that for their stuff that gps though like we said it, it it's a lot more than a gps come, it's not just a gps yeah. it turns see, it into a dual screen so you can monitor multiple right. things but if we're looking at the panniers if you would have crashed into me and i had the bmw panniers oh it it would have been a dent you not just thrown crushed. a big dent sticker over it yeah yeah, yeah it'd be yeah. fine <laughs> not totally trashing by by the way while you're here go ahead and get that saddle okay back. cool yeah. yeah so what do you think about that bike tj i dig it yeah I like uh the front, like we were saying, is a little sharp, uh, but um, I like BMWs. I always have. Um, like I, uh, you know, sitting around one winter and I watched a documentary, Long Way Around, mm -hmm. Long oh, yeah. Way Down. It's a good one. Uh, right in, in that first series, they were trying to get KTM to sponsor them. They wouldn't. Uh, and then BMW 
AEW stepped up and I just started liking those bikes and I have always and I I just yeah I dig the shit out of that bike. Yep. So for the between two wheels with the honorary one, nailed it. See that we are all for the BMW. So when you go to the Instagram post for this episode, leave in the comments what your thoughts are. Uh, so if you want to see how we viewed these, go and look at the show notes at between two wheels.com. The two is spelled out T W O. So do we all get to pick a winner now? Which one we'd buy if we were using our own money, um, money and option money mm. as an option. Yeah. Um, yes, yes. Let's right. do that. Okay. okay. So go for, go, go what? for it. You, Fuck it. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, let's hear I it. think everyone's gonna, you know, not be surprised. I think the Honda for me is the best fit, uh, just because. I mean, you're talking what fifteen hundred dollars cheaper than the next closest option when you're really only losing about two hundred CCs. I mean, you're still. I mean, with a, a stage one slip on, you're gonna break into the the triple digits in your horsepower and still have over seventy five foot pounds of torque. That is plenty to get a 532 pound motorcycle around in the dirt mm-hmm. just hands down and then pile that on top of the biggest tank out there plus i'm a honda fanboy so i know that those motors are going to be just amazing you can beat the shit out of them uh easy to maintain just it's a win across all boards for me okay i would say that s- second place would have to be uh, the bmw yeah yeah okay the only thing that the honda beats it out is the price i feel like you're getting Dollar for dollar, I feel like Honda's giving you more. Maybe not the same quality or anything like that, but if you're, this would all be our first ADV bikes. I, I agree with you. Dollar for dollar, I'd have to go Honda. The, the Honda is my first pick. Yep, absolutely. If I was to go out and put money down right now, I'd get I'd get the Africa. Mm-hmm. And like I said, it's got the Honda name back in it. And looking at the bike, it looks like it's ready to go. They've ran these in Dakar stock yeah, without changing anything. They just throw them out there. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, you you throw your own GPS on there and run your phone. Boom. Go to town. You're done. I mean, you don't have to add anything. I mean, bags if you need it. But yeah, other than that, everything else is there. Yeah. If I was to go spend money right now, it would be the Africa Twin. And we've talked about this. Oh, plenty of times. If I had extra money to blow, it'd be the the BMW. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Fair enough. TJ. Yeah, well, there's no doubt. I think we're all on the same page. I totally agree with what y'all just said. Um, I did want to bring up, though, did y'all say the KTM, it goes how many miles without the... F- 15,000 clicks, so 9,300. 9, 9, 9, 9,320 miles between service intervals. Yeah. There's That's a lot. To, something to be said about that. Oh, for right? sure. Wow. I'm telling you, man, KTMs are rock solid. You can beat those things to the ground. I will say, though, this is just, I mean, this I'm talking 15, 20 years ago. Getting a KTM serviced, you're forking out some cash for uh, it, for see, sure. So I don't know if, if it evens out at some point. That hurts my feelings. There but it definitely is pricey. Well, so it's Harley pricing for service? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. I would say on an ADV bike like this. That's, um, yeah. All right. Well, not to be a conformist, I'm right there with y'all. Okay. Uh, I am. Conformist. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I think best bang for the buck is the Honda. And to the same point y'all just made, the Honda brand, it, it's, it is what it is. You can't yep. get away from that. And they're backing up their ADV line with a significant dirt bike history as well as a significant street bike history. So I think pound for pound, buck for buck, that's going to be the best bet. And I know you guys give me shit for being bougie, but I'm right there with y'all. So for now, for now, (laughs) you're bougie in different ways. He he keeps saying that, but like I said, still too scared to buy a dirt bike. So so you were going to talk talk about that. Is there a dirt bike in your garage? Well, no. Is there a dirt bike in yours? I told you. I'm not buying one. I've got the off-road experience to back it up. I'm not buying one until at least one of you fuckers get it. Because <laughs> I'm not bitching out. I know what to expect. I know what I'm going to get when I go off-road. So I'm just waiting for one of y'all to pull the trigger. All right. 
All right. By the end of this year, I'll have a dirt bike. All right. Ooh. It's on the tape. But, I but you're make gonna, no promises. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you're going to have to go with me and help me figure out what I need. I got you. So I got you. All right. So let's talk about the closing argument here. When choosing a first bike, what is the number one thing a new rider should consider? And since we have a guest, TJ, what is the number one thing a rider should consider when buying their first bike? Hmm. Go on. That's a good one. I would think for me, it's always cost because you don't want to get out there and fuck something up and it'd be so expensive you can't fix or... Um, and then the next thing is throw your leg over it. And then the other thing, man, is just going to a good dealership. Mm -hmm. Like having that good experience and letting you try a different bike. And that bike don't have to be the biggest, baddest bike out there. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I would, uh, yeah, cost and uh, what fits your ass. Yep. All right. Yeah. Ken took the words right out of my mouth man mm -hmm. yeah. i was gonna say your, your finances first what can what you can afford and then probably next once you figure out what your budget is do you need a new bike or do you need a used bike always used <laughs> for and, me and i and generally speaking i recommend people buy a used bike in case they don't like riding after all True. You, you hopefully won't lose as much money mm -hmm. if you have to turn around and sell it because you don't like riding. Right. And of course, if, you know, if you're an, if you're a brand new rider, there's a high chance you're going to lay that thing down. Right. Whether it's just standing in your garage and mm -hmm. you just lay it down, or you, you go know, down. Go down. Right. Right. All right, Justin. Mm, number one thing that's difficult. I would say how comfortable do you feel on the bike? I'm not talking about like, you know, road glide versus a sportster as far as like how your body feels. But when you sell on the bike, does it feel good to you? Cause mm -hmm. there is that you do need that confidence, that confidence. You need at least that confidence to even have a chance of making that an enjoyable experience. For me, it's, is this something that I can grow into or is this something I'm going to quickly grow out of? Yeah. So I'd say that's a close number two for me. And I'm, you know, everyone says I pick on sportsters too much, but it is the truth. Do you go and buy the 883 sportster because it's the cheapest? Yes. Or, <laughs> well, <laughs> that's what I did. <laughs> right. But is, is it wiser to go look at a 1200 or a Dyna, something that, yes, it has a bigger motor, but is it something you can enjoy? For longer as you hone your riding skills and you get better that you don't have to trade in just to keep up with your buddies yeah, yeah. so to, to that when it comes to like people asking well what do you think would be a good starter bike i think anybody any bike can really be a, a starter bike if you want to if you have the means to go buy a hayabusa no you know, no. but here's the thing. A Jixxer 1000 is not a good starter bike. But so a high boost is definitely not. But here's the thing though. Uh -huh. The other part of that is, are you smart enough to not be a fucking idiot on it? How many 18 year old men? Hey, you know, <laughs> are smart enough to not be an idiot. You can start riding at 32. I mean, yeah, well, true. Yeah. yeah. He, he built his own fucking motorcycle and decided, Hey, I'm going to put my life on the line and go ride this fucker with my son. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How's that? How's that any different? Yeah, very really? true. It's very true. It's, it's very it's, true. It's all. It all depends on the person. Yeah. Yeah. There's you know talking to people on your channel and people that we meet and look at you and go, you don't fucking need to be on any motorcycle right now. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Some of the people have been on our group rides, man. Yeah. <laughs> should not be on a motorcycle. Should not be on any motorcycle. And they're on no fucking one thousand pound baggers. Like oh my yeah. god. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think any bike can be a starter bike, but it all depends on the person. Yeah. I actually said that the FTR would make an awesome starter bike. And, and, I, and honestly, that one would. Yeah. As long as light, you're tall it's enough. It's controllable. Yeah. Well, plus it has the nannies. It's got your... It's got the three, keep you out of trouble. the three riding modes. Yep. Yeah. You know. I 100% I, I agree with you on that. The FTR would be the perfect starter bike because the nannies keep you in check. 
As long as you're mo- as, responsible enough to as keep them. As long those as on. you're responsible right. enough to use them. Right. right. You know, so. you got to use this thing. And this thing, yeah, yeah, make sure they're connected. Yeah, you, you, you know, use your mind <laughs> Not and control them. Yeah. Control the throttle. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, let us know what you think. It'd be the number one thing that a new rider buying their first bike should consider. Uh, go to the Instagram post and check this out. Anyways, that does it for this episode. Thanks, TJ. Hey, thank, thank you for you uh, hanging out, buddy. Yeah, Glad you're here. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm having a blast. Uh, <laughs> Looks like you're about I, to fall asleep over there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just, uh, I still like the Beamer. (laughs) Yeah, it's a good bike. We all do. Thank you for tuning in to Between Two Wheels Podcast. To see the show notes for this and all of our episodes, to find links to our social media and Patreon page where we are raising money for Project Clean Slate, head over to our website at www.betweentwowheels.com. The two is spelled out T-W-O. On behalf of Justin, Uncle Ken, I am Johnny Roblox saying, be yourself unless you're a jerk. Then be someone better. Peace. I like, I like that.